What's up Scrollgers? Today, we'll be overviewing my Tempo Order deck. I've played hundreds and hundreds of ranked matches with Tempo Order, and it has been a consistent force on the ranked ladder ever since the Rebellion update. Right now, this is one of the few decks that can stand up to aggroth because it has nice armor and great spells. It's a fun deck to play in that you will feel like your opponent can't do anything as you thrash them around. Tempo Order is an aggressive order deck with a low resource curve, focusing on controlling the board and pacing of the match with its variety of utility scrolls, powerful attacking creatures, and great defensive creatures. This deck can stand up to just about anything with the right draws. I recommend playing this deck to anybody who wants to play an aggressive deck. This 50 scroll deck consists of 16 common scrolls, 18 uncommon scrolls, and 16 rare scrolls. If we take the just for you section of the store's prices of 100 gold per common, 500 gold per uncommon, and 1000 gold per rare, this deck would cost 26,600 gold. After taking the actual prices from the black market, the deck would cost just about 24,200 gold. If you have the order starter deck, then the rest of the deck would cost just about 4 or 5,000 less gold. The commons and uncommons in Temple Order are incredibly cheap, but the rares are really expensive. I'll show scrolls you can swap with them at the end of the video. There are positive and negative aspects to Temple Order. The pros of Temple Order are Your opponent will never be able to feel safe while you have so many tools at your disposal. A good variety of creatures have you ready for any matchup. Similarly to Agroth, wins quick and easy. The cons are, no way of coming back after losing board control. Very dependent on draws. All decks depend on draws, but I feel it especially with tempo order because you need the right spells at the right time and a constant flow of creatures. Let's start to actually overview the deck. There are 29 creatures, 0 structures, 18 spells, and 3 enchantments. These are your early 1 and 2 cost creatures. They aren't your main creatures, but they add up and overwhelm your opponent. Agionite is great for sniping low health creatures like Vetters on turn 1 or 2. Crossbowman, although slow with 3 countdown, is valuable as the only creature in the deck with 4 attack. 4 attack destroys most strong threats and the range trait is sometimes helpful too. Just be careful placing him early because he's easily sniped by Kiffel, Graves, or Aging Knights. Ducal Infantryman is one of my favorite 2 drops. The little extra attack he gives is amazing for skirmishers. He can be used as a warm body in the early game or a crucial attack buff to your stronger creatures later on. The Squire is just a vanilla 2-2-3 in this deck. There's not much to say about her. Here are the main offensive players. The skirmishers are key. They plow through lanes and are always a huge threat. Relentless is amazing, especially in a deck like this with so many attack buffs. Both Relaros and the Vanguard help to buff those skirmishers' attack and are solid creatures at increasing the entire deck's attack to take down those idols faster. I only run two Relaros because of the unique trait, and Vanguard is the only thing above four costs in the deck. Here is like the defense. Wingswarder will protect you from lots of energy and decay's removal. She is also good as a moving 4 health wall if nothing else. Wing Shield and Gallant Defender have conditional armor 2, which is a brick wall for an earthen mirthless growth board. I only run 2 warders because they aren't useful in all matchups, and only 2 Gallant Defenders because this is a more aggressive deck and you will often have more units than your opponent has on the board. She is still necessary in this deck to stop aggressive onslaughts when you have the same number of units as your opponent though. These are the tricks Tempo Order has up its sleeve. Blessing of Haste and Roasted Bean Potion allow you to attack when you aren't supposed to and will really mess up your opponent. Speaking of messing up your opponent, Flip and Pother move around your opponent's units and act as Order's form of removal in that you can flip an opponent threat to you and kill it or move over a defensive wall. Focus and Eternal Sword are great attack buffs. Attack is something this deck can't get enough of. Decimation can be used to whittle your opponent's creature's health, helping your skirmishers plow through rows, or destroy one health creatures like Vetters, or most commonly be used as a way to deal two direct idle damage, 
Temple Order can freely leave a couple vitals at 2 health, knowing it has Decimation in its back pocket. Here is the resource curve for my Tempo Order deck. It's a very low curve, and you shouldn't really find yourself at 7 or 8 order. Start sacrificing for scrolls when you reach 4 or 5 order. You play the deck by just continuously putting down creatures of any cost and using your utility scrolls to stay on top and keep your opponent off guard. If you think your opponent has a control deck with board clear mechanics, then maybe hold off on playing a lot of little creatures and focus on playing large threats. It also takes experience to understand when to focus on destroying idols and forget about the creatures, but that is a big part of mastering tempo order. You'd be surprised about how much attack you can get from a few spells and a Rolleros on the board. Similarly to Aggroth, the starting hand is extremely significant. I will mulligan if I don't have at least two creatures to play before turn 4. The starting hand is very important for an aggressive deck like this. It is also nice to go first. As with most decks, there are possible adjustments you can make. You might want to experiment with different utility scrolls, Horn of Ages, New Orders, Purification, Crown of Strength, Fleetness, Transposition, and Reversal are all options instead of the current utility scrolls. Squire can be replaced with Winged Soldier if you'd rather have 3 attack than 3 health. And Winged Soldier, being a soldier, might make you want to put Wings Captain in instead of one of the 4 drops. The spiky creatures Royal Spearman and Ducal Spearman are good options if you know you're going to be facing growth. Wings Warder can easily be switched with Effigy of the Queen if you know you're going to face energy. Both serve similar roles, but I prefer Wings Warder for most matchups because it can be a moving wall whereas Effigy of, the, Effigy of the Queen can't move. Effigy of the Queen completely stops energy though. You don't have to worry about burns, sparks, thunder surges, all that stuff. So definitely use it if you know you're going to face energy. So that'll be it for the deck guide video. You can find many ranked match videos of me playing this deck on my channel. Like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching and keep on scrolling scrollgers.